Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Yeah, one more time. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your own. That's how God saves men. Listen, that's how God lifts men. There was only one anointing service in the Bible, in the ministry of Jesus. When he was about to go to heaven, receive the Holy Ghost. Every other thing was a word exposition service. Three and a half years under an intense teaching anointing and they became apostles. It was not impartation that made them apostles. It was the quality of the word. So when the word of God comes to you, Satan fights the word because of what it can do. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is useless when it is not taught. The word of God is useless when it is not received. The word of God is useless when it is not believed. You can carry a bomb and play with it for as long as it has not been programmed to explode. You can even kick it and play football. But let someone by mistake activate the potential in that bomb. One tiny object can totally wipe out a nation. That's what the word can do. So if the word of God looks important, there may be many suggestions as to why it is so. Number one, maybe the word of God has not come to you. Scripture may have come. Memory verses may have come. But the word of God has not come scripture is not the word of god memory verses is not the word of god recitations no the scribes and the pharisees had this so when jesus came he said ye are not knowing the scripture he said you search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and then you will not come to me hallelujah every time we are gathered we are gathered to grow and to rise and that by the ministry of the word listen ladies and gentlemen nobody will invent a new system of transformation the saints are transformed by the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the word gives them understanding the ministry of the spirit gives empowerment it is this twofold dimension of spiritual operations that empower men it is empowering men is not a mystery you can know that men can be empowered to the degree to which they sit under an accurate dispensing of truth not the opinions of men not the wisdom of men not just the theological exegesis that comes with sophia human wisdom but the wisdom and the communication of the spirit that is from above that's what has the ability to change men so you must hunger for the accurate understanding of the word as it relates to the major areas of our lives. You know, one of my assignments 
by the grace of God to the body is to demystify spiritual operations. This is one of the reasons why many believers do not receive because we men and women of God sometimes pride ourselves in creating a lot of mysticism around the operation of the word. A thing does not have to look mystical to be supernatural. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yeah. The most powerful activity that can happen to a man is as simple, as simple and accessible to everyone. The system that leads men to the new birth experience. That in one minute a man can be spiritually translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Yes, it looks so basic, but without that one decision, there are people in hell today. They got PhDs many times as complicated as that decision or more complicated than the decision but it didn't take them to heaven the system of growth will always be the same martha martha you are worried and upset about many things but one thing is needful and this mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet i don't care what your life is just pay the price to sit at the master's feet and let his word come if you sit and sleep you would die like the woman that died upstairs when the apostle was teaching so it's not just to sit down and snore or to sit down and wonder does this really work your attention your spirit that hunger that desire God you are about to speak and when your word comes understanding is coming when your word comes healing is coming when your word comes breakthrough is coming our lives will remain reflections of what we do not know or what we do not believe or what we have not received or otherwise our lives will always be a reflection the interesting thing about the systems of this world is that your opinion does not matter. Whether you agree or not, whether you argue or not, whether you believe or not, doesn't make any difference. Is that true? You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So whether you believe that the counsel being communicated is of God or not, whether the religious circle with which you are planted in agrees or not one thing is for sure whether you agree that a plane is in the air right now or not it doesn't stop the plane from moving god remains god whether you believe him or not his principles remain potent whether we believe or not our assignment is to make a choice between the pride and the depravity that comes with the fallen man and a humble and a meek heart that is able to receive and transit this is your assignment to choose that as your word comes lord i quit argument my result clearly shows that there is something i do not know so i submit myself to the wisdom of the rabbi of the ages and give god time and watch what he can do you know sometimes it takes literally minutes for god to bring you into that result it's not always a long time hallelujah can we pray one more time cry to god from the depth of your heart help me oh god take away the stony heart give me a heart of flesh Lord, I need real results in my life. Provable. about to learn tonight you know 
for many of you who are sensitive you will know that this is a very powerful year um, when the word of god begins to gain strength and performance in the lives of people it confirms number one that the word is true but then number two it also confirms that the people are receiving it are we together now yes the word of god that is coming to us tonight is very powerful is is a word of deliverance is a word of enlightenment is a word that will give us insight is a word that will give us stability and is a word that by the grace of god will respond to the issues that buffet the lives of men hallelujah wonderful merciful Precious Redeemer and friend Who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men Oh, you rescue the souls of men Almighty Infinite Father Faithfully loving your own. Here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we falling before your throne. You are the one that we pray. Genesis chapter 17. You give the healing and the grace that our hearts hunger for. 17. We'll read verse 1 to 3 and then we'll jump to verse 7. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. We're not dealing with that, but I can stop here to talk all night. The word there is El Shaddai. That's where you get the word El Shaddai. Are we together now? I am the almighty God. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee. How? Exceedingly. Verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Go to verse 7. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after the, your generations, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. One more verse, 8. And I will give unto thee and thy seed after thee the land, wherein thou art a stranger all the land of canaan for an everlasting possession and i will be their god i appear to you and i tell you i am el shaddai walk with me and i will make certain things possible in your life and not just your life it will affect your children remember what psalm 112 says 
it says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Then it says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. The man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. I had a discussion yesterday with a dear lady that really provoked, for me, it, it really challenged me to share the things that I'll be sharing. And um, she communicated an observation and she told me, she said, Apostle, I have noticed that many of the brethren from Zaria, when they go outside of this environment, they are extremely spiritual. They are men and women of character. I mean, you can look at them and just know that this man came from Zaria. But they are very poor. They are very mediocre and they never are able to do anything well when it comes to do with other matters outside spirituality they are very very inefficient it was an observation and that really got to me i felt very responsible over that statement and i said why would this be so would it be a good news to know that someone came out from among us or from around this city where we are domiciled and that we do not see a manifestation of the whole counsel of God in the life of that person? Especially with the times that we live, I really got concerned because she observed that many of these brethren, many of them had fellowships, is that correct? They had groups, whether church youth groups or some of them even had churches. So when it has to do with apportioning things spiritually, they usually are the center of attraction. In fact, to the point that when people just say, I, I, I am from Zaria, whether a student, whether one, even if you are an armed robber, you just say from Zaria, I mean, you are worthy of reception. But then the quality of their lives, the lives of their children, their families, some of them are maybe the first in their families to really take God seriously. And yet the, 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 the evidences that should create conviction are not there. I was touched. I really was touched. I said, God, this cannot be your will. And I said, what could be wrong? The obvious answer is the men of God that have had the opportunity to communicate the truths of the word within this territory over time that is the obvious explanation it means that there has been something about the lopsidedness of our spiritual communication because men reflect the voices that they heard is that true so that means that somewhere in our spiritual communication either through honest ignorance or through the trivializing of certain dimensions of the kingdom experience the saints were not properly equipped to both be spiritual and to be responsible maybe i would put it this way that we focused on the issues that matter to godliness but we forgot the issues that matter to life yet the bible says his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto both life and godliness. It will be wickedness to rejoice at a Christian who cannot pay his child's school fees. This is more than finance. Are you get what I'm saying? It will be wicked for a Christian who malhandles his wife, although he's a tongue-talking prayer warrior who belongs to a church, but because he was not equipped to know that your family life and the quality of it is also a measure of your knowing God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen, as I grow in leadership and the privilege of influence over people, I am learning that any side of the, the kingdom life you neglect, you will see a multitude of people reflect that lopsidedness. 
the church in Nigeria the church in Africa is largely responsible for the the quality of the lives of people in Africa because Africa is a very religious continent every Sunday every Wednesday every Tuesday every Saturday there are vigils there are fasting programs there are more committed people in the church in Africa than any other part in the world our level of spiritual committal is worth um, commending yet we are obvious reflections of the lopsidedness that has come largely from the pulpit this is an uncomfortable truth but any and every man of god that truly fears god must take this as a responsibility that the reason why something may be going wrong it may be that i have not been able to communicate this dimension of god so the members believe but they believe an error so they become that error because whatever you believe you become I got very challenged this ministry by the grace of God has been able to excel and do the things that God has granted us grace to do because by the privilege of God's grace he has allowed us to capture in our lives all the areas and the dimensions that are required for efficiency from administration to leadership to the pastoral work to a system of mentorship and continuity are we together now to security to finance and all of that so the results that we celebrate by the grace of god is not just an issue of the will of god it is the product of systems that were believed and received and engaged this is the result and where we will go from here will also be a reflection of the things we have learned and are learning or the things we are ignoring it is it will be my greatest pain as a man of god to see that a few years from now when you rise that you will be walking through life and destiny limping and the reason for that limp will be something i did not teach you something i trivialized that was important for your life if i fail as a person and you succeed in receiving the whole counsel of god your success will turn me into a success again are we blessed let me say this before i start teaching you are not qualified to create your curriculum as a student listen listen don't, don't just be too quick to write just try to listen one of the reasons i believe why many people are not efficient first spiritually and then in other areas of their lives is they sit as students and they write what they believe should be their curriculum it's wrong it's pride those who are in school when you come into a class a level a lecture hall you sit quietly and trust the wisdom of the lecturer am i correct the lecturer comes in and whether he looks like what you expected or not you trust the fact that if that institution could employ him then there was a system of vetting nobody was just brought on the street paul a man approved of god he did, he was not just recruited by will there was a system of vetting and accreditation are we together now and then the lecturer now tells you these are the topics or the courses we are going to cover right and usually you will find a lot of arrogant students who will not write and say no 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 that thing is not supposed to be there this person is probably in hundred level or secondary school or wherever and that man who is talking may be a doctor or a professor just because he sounds like you doesn't mean you are at the same level there is a history that you have no idea of even if you don't respect the man, respect the history. Are we together now? And then he begins to teach and mentor you. And to the degree to which you pay attention, it will shock you that you are becoming like him. You get to a point where you so become like him 
that a group of individuals accredit you and they award you a system of certification that now qualifies you it doesn't stop you from learning but it qualifies you to be an authority within the context of what you studied this is how we grow in the spirit many believers sit down and choose and say no this issue of prayer we are not supposed to be praying this way even me my spirit i don't feel it that person who is talking doesn't know anything about the power of god nor the grace of god does not understand anything about the anointing yet he's already writing a book in his mind on prayer and vetting who should you know teach that person cannot even pray for 20 minutes and yet he believes it's an authority in prayer the same thing with the teaching of the word the same thing with the issue of wealth and abundance and a good life and all of that the challenge has been that many students in the school of the spirit choose the courses they want to offer and leave the rest the curriculum has been preset that if you attend all the lectures it will make you become certain things remember our scripture that is almost a memory verse here that i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified there are many precious pastors men of god who will not pay attention to certain dimensions of the kingdom life and then as their ministries begin to grow the lapse in that knowledge begins to reflect are we together yes i give you an instance if you are say for instance a man of god who does not pay attention to the quality of family life simply because the people who are your congregation at that time are children and students you forget that the father today was the child of yesterday and if you do not teach them by the time they get into their family lives all that will happen in that family is a crusade and a prayer conference because that's exactly what you have taught they can only do what they know is that true that's our generation i mean this is this is the next generation that's like samuel <laughs> telling eli i hear you is god speaking to us so it's important as believers that we open ourselves to the full counsel of god i don't know how many of you can walk on one leg indefinitely if you are playing sports that's a different thing but in life and destiny to walk on one leg continually you can't do much and the pressure will even hurt you is that true you need to have that balance and stability and this is what by the grace of god we seek to provide week in week out and that includes tonight are you ready to receive now lord i humble myself to receive your word can you pray that one prayer Just pray that simple prayer. I cast my crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone before your royal majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King. You're the King of kings and lords. Of lords. Write it down. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Please, I want to beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you tonight. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. 
Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. Please let's read it together. The warfare dimension. Make sure you write the topic. The warfare. I want to introduce you to a very foreign dimension of the blessings of God that many, many believers do not know. And this has been responsible for the limitations in the lives of families, in the lives of individuals. You see what is happening in our nation now? There is a lot of fear. And listen, the Lord showed me something. I, I hope that in one of the days I will have the opportunity to share. I saw something in a vision that made me fear about certain things that was coming on the body of Christ. It's not exactly negative, but it will have a negative effect. Let's continue. One, two, read. Go up to the mountain uh -huh, and bring wood. Stop. Stop. The prophet is writing by the Spirit. First instruction, go up to the mountain. Second instruction, bring... What is your purpose of going up the mountain? To bring wood. <laughs> Just follow me carefully. I don't know what wood is doing in the mountain. Because at the last time I checked, you don't grow woods on the mountain. The Bible says, go up to the mountain and bring wood and then use that wood to build the house not a house use the wood you get up the mountain to build the house and i will take pleasure in that house that was built from the wood that was gotten up the mountain and then he says and i will be glorified saith the lord Go up to the mountain, Koinonia, and bring wood. Use the wood that you bring to build my house. Are we together? Now, of course, prophetically, he was talking about physical temples. But now you know that the house of God is not a physical structure. You know that? So every time God talks about building his house, he's talking of building his ecclesia. You understand that theologically speaking the house of god today does not mean a building or a church it does not even just mean systems it means people so it takes wood to build people we all as living stones build into a spiritual house are we together now tonight go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified when my house is built listen very carefully there are there are many instructions about the building of the lord's house and one of it he tells us that it takes wood whatever that wood is we know that is something you do not yet have and so it says the location of that wood is up the mountain, not to the forest. Go up the mountain, listen carefully, and get wood. And then with that wood, go and build my house. Matthew chapter 5. Quicken our eyes to see. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was teaching in what we call the Beatitudes. He was teaching the principles of the kingdom. In fact, let's start from 4. Matthew chapter 4. What we know as the temptation of Jesus. Now, there are three levels of temptation that the devil presented to Jesus. I'm interested in the third one. The first temptation had to do with your individual hunger are we together now jesus had finished praying and fasting 40 days and the first person he would meet would be satan himself 
And then Satan tells him, turn this stone to bread. Second temptation, he takes him up. The second temptation had to do with his spiritual convictions. Are we together? He took him to a holy city. Satan, holy city. Satan, holy city. Took Jesus up a holy city and set him on a pinnacle and said, Jesus, fall down. Throw yourself to the ground. It is written, he shall put his angels. So it was a temptation that related to his spiritual life. That related to his spiritual conviction. The first was his hunger, his individual life. And then he says, no, I've gone past that level. Then the second thing affected his faith. But the third was a very strange one. And that's what I want us to look at. Matthew chapter 4. If God is blessing you, say amen. amen. Verse 8. We are reading to 11. The third temptation. Read with me. We'll read verse 8 and then I'll continue. One to read. Again, the devil taketh him up into, stop, not towards, into. The devil taketh him. Who is the him? Your Jesus. Taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. And what happened when they got to that mountain? He stood from that mountain and saw the glory of the entire earth. That there is a mountain a man can stand. And from that mountain you can see the glory of the whole earth. This is the mountain that Satan took Jesus. There were many mountains. But he knew only one would be worth tempting Jesus in. And he took Jesus to that mountain. The Bible calls it an exceeding high mountain. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world. And the glory of them next verse and say it to him ah, all these things what things the kingdoms and the glories i will give thee so the mountain is a place of exchange listen remember don't forget our scripture well, well i'm building something here go up to the mountain something you will do in the mountain will give you wood use that wood and come down come and build the house of god and the bible says god will be glorified so satan is negotiating a transaction here but there was a location he said jesus i want to talk to you but let's go up the mountain we don't do these kinds of discussion on a plain land he took him to an exceeding high mountain where it was only two of them and then he says this is i want to give That one is a deception. Because when you give something and demand something, it's not giving. It's business. He used a very deceptive terminology. He says, I will give thee if thou will fall down. I will give you pure water if you will give me hundred naira. Is, is, that, is that charity? No. Satan is negotiating something with Jesus, your Jesus. And look at the interesting system. He starts by marketing something for him. He says, before we talk, see first. So that you will believe me, look at the kingdoms. And then look at their glories. The wealth. And then he says, now that you have seen and are convinced, let us discuss. This is my proposal. I will give you access from this mountain to all these kingdoms. They will be at your beck and call. What I will get in return, listen carefully, is that you will fall down and worship me. Now imagine, God forbid, but just imagine that Jesus agreed. What do you think would have happened? Jesus would have come down that mountain with strange influence that you cannot explain. You, now, you were not there. All you know is that he bowed down and said, Satan, I'm more interested in the kingdom and the glory. Oh, King Satan, I acknowledge you as my Lord. I give you my heart. And Satan says, okay, as I agreed. 
if satan tempted jesus how many other people has he taken to that mountain to say come forget about this let me show you how things happen in this earth and then he says look at this i will give you these kingdoms and the glory bow down to me not everybody will say no some people will say yes and will say this is the deal here you have here you have go down immediately they go down in two months their albums are all over the world regardless of what they sing and you say my god this guy is so skilled no something happened up the mountain i pray that god will open your eyes to understand what i'm teaching you tonight there are certain dimensions of the supplies of god that cannot happen by doing business with men you must do business with spirits i cast my crown before listen the highest royalty remember that's what satan wanted bow down and worship me satan has been obsessed with allegiance and loyalty the kingdoms did not mean anything to him the glories did not mean anything to him but he knows that it is the system that men need and so what he decided to do was to make sure that he has control of those systems and then he will continue to call men to say let us negotiate what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world question where did that business happen that he gained the whole world because that is a business terminology what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world where is the look show me where men gain the whole world do they gain it in a bank do they gain it in an investment house show me where men gain the whole world and give up their soul that business when you get there the commodity is your soul versus the world not your product your soul and the world 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 so you now know that he says i wish above all things that you prosper but i hope your soul too was not lost while you are prospering i hope that the way you prospered was god's own way i know how you are prospered when your soul does not prosper it was exchanged for your wealth sit down sit down sit down Yabone naka Sujada ne na Sarkin salama Sarkin My concern is not your prosperity. I can know what kind of exchange happened by looking at your soul. Immediately I look at your money. The next thing I should look at is your soul. If I find out that your spiritual life went down, there was an exchange that happened on the mountain. Whether you are aware or not, you have followed a system that has sold your soul. There are many, sit down please. There are many men of God. There are many businessmen. There are many captains of industry that gave received the world and sold their soul this temptation satan gave jesus was not the last time he would give it he has been giving it till today so he says i wish above all things that you will prosper but i will know how the prosperity came not by looking at the money but looking at your soul when I, I see both your soul and your pocket rising, I know where that grace came from. It can't be the devil. The devil will never allow your pocket and your soul to rise at the same time. So I look at your prosperity and then I look at your soul. I see that in your rising, you gave up your values. You gave up your character. You gave up your family. You gave up your integrity. I know that there is a negotiation happening. You are giving your soul for mundane things. 
Are we together? Look what Jesus did. Verse 10. Ah. Jesus said, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. What was Satan looking for? Allegiance. Satan does not need money. He does not want money. So, Apostle, why is it that Satan, why is it that there is difficulty in meeting our bills at home? Satan knows that men cannot endure hardship indefinitely. So, he manipulates the economy and waits for you on that mountain. He knows that when the pain becomes too much and your church cannot build, the pastor will say, I thank God for this. But I prophesy, Sam, bring one million. Remember, that's not how he started. But because of the pain, we need money. Generator needs to be fueled fast. And now I'm at a point, we brought a man of God abroad and we cannot pay him. So Sam, bring one million. Bring two million. So I see the church's financing rising, but I look at the soul of the members. So I know that an exchange has happened. The pastor negotiated an exchange. I, I, I'm not saying this in a critical way. The greatest dread of Satan is that you prosper while your soul prospers. What then is his gain? Think how annoying it will be for me. As a businessman, this is what I'm selling. Look up, please. And then... I see you hold both money and my product. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, you think what that would do to me. My advantage has been ruined. You have shown me I don't need you. That's the statement that this is happening. And so when you can have a prosperous soul and you are empowered economically, are we together? You get up in the morning and say, my children, we are waiting upon the Lord today, yet the increment in the school fees does not affect the prayer because the resources are there. Glory be to God. Satan says, what then is my entry point in this family? Thank you. Is God speaking to someone? What shall it profit a man? Please listen to this message because I promise you, every one of us, you will climb that mountain. I got listen 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 you may climb that mountain and come back with wood or you can climb that mountain and come back as a soulless person that on that mountain Satan will give you mundane things and after 30 years of wealth and affluence and increase you will find out that you are on your way to hell this message is a deliverance to the body of Christ Listen to me. I can tell you that Satan hates what you are hearing. I call it the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Where the product is your soul versus the world. Hmm. Your soul. Did you ever hear that they sell souls? Hey, Jimmy is a businessman. Where do you say? I know they sell pure water. Is that true? I know they sell clothes. But he's saying there is a marketplace on earth where the commodity of exchange is the soul of man. Not slave trade was only a mimicking of something that was already in the realm of the spirit. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. Everything I need is in you. Hallelujah. Revelation 18, read for me from verse 9. We're reading 9 to 13. Babylon, as a woman, that Jezebel that sits upon the horse. The Bible tells us she's not only a prophetess, she's a businesswoman. 
Babylon, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, is falling. For in one hour is your judgment come. 11. And the merchants, who are those who will cry? The businessmen of the earth. How did they become rich? The Bible says, the, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore their prosperity was tied to their, their connection with her whatever happened to babylon happened to their business are you following me please hmm. what are her merchandise look at these are the products that this woman deals in are you ready believers number one gold and silver and precious stones and pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet tyan wood all manner of ivory all manner of vessels of most precious wood brass iron marble tartine mm. cinnamon odors ointment frankincense wine babylon also sells anointing oil did you see it there and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses help me now read together and chariots and slaves and souls of men babylon any one of these products you want she can give you give me the souls of men so that my track when i produce anything it will get everywhere and she says the condition bow to me that exchange happens on that mountain while it's happening you don't know the next thing you just sit down and find out that your soul is glued to their music the, you, you, there's nothing you can do you just find out that you bite you are even minding yourself the next thing you are nodding your head and, ah god forgive me you don't even know what is happening the souls of men What kind of a businesswoman is this that does both physical and spiritual business sells gold sells anointing for you you want anointing for ministry she can give you too <sighs> but you always know that it is her product by one single litmus test as the wealth grows your soul dies your wealth and your soul cannot grow together when you do business with her i wish above all things koinonia tell me you are getting blessed tonight so when your soul is going down and then there is increase coming could it be that an exchange has happened on that mountain what shall it profit a man if he gains gains loses Gain, loses business terminologies you can gain the whole world and then you lose your soul is god speaking to us there is an assault of darkness listen over the body of christ and let me tell you this Many people in this country do not know how to prosper God's way. And that includes men of God. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Many people do not know how to prosper God's way. And right now that the systems that provide for things like corruption and the rest, the civilization of the world is making men more vocal now. The things they could not say before, they can now say. That means if the truth is not taught, the church alongside the territory is in trouble. There are many men today who became rich by stealing and investing. They don't know anything. They cannot mentor you to be wealthy. They only stole money from some political 
scoffers and then had that money and had a business partner who helped them to invest the money and now they are rich you may call them businessmen you may call them millionaires and billionaires but they have negotiated something they cannot raise another generation so right now there's confusion people love god but they are hungry hunger is moving like the angel of death are we together now one by one is meeting families some of you as you are seated right here if i told you stand up let me give you a prophecy that tomorrow will change your financial life you will be surprised that without your will you will find yourself standing up that's to tell you how hard this thing is becoming are we together there are students probably sitting here now that it will take the grace of god i cannot tell you literally without exaggeration hundreds of text messages by people apostle help our family our rent our this apostle we just finished three days dry you see it there that thing is supposed to be a mockery to the name of the lord we just finished three days dry and god could not solve our hunger problem and then the people continue to contemplate what kind of god is this oh and satan says that's exactly what i want because let me tell you when come sam when sam continues to say help me help me and i say i cannot help him one day he will stop calling me he stops calling me because someone else has held his hand and says let's go to the mountain you can't keep begging forever let me show you give me your soul and i will give you tea and bread he will try it one year and it will not work he will say okay go i will come back he will wait till the hunger increases and say i'm still here a day will come that hunger will hit you and like Esau, you will say, please, what is a portage? What, what do you think happened to Esau? Do you not know that Satan waited until Esau was hungry? Satan always comes to men when they are hungry. He waits until you are hungry. Then he comes with his suggestion. It's a business strategy. Any businessman will tell you that people don't negotiate at a point of convenience. You wait until there is a need. Then you say, okay, here I am again. I told you to sell me the land. You say it was 400,000. Okay, it's because you have food. When the economy hits you, then I bring 250 cash. And then you say, Kai, my wife, what did you say? That Just bring this thing. That's what Satan does. So as a young student who is being rewarded by your parents, you don't sow yet, you reap. And then you are laughing and say, all oh, this finance thing, I don't, I don't mind. And then the next thing, you see a lady and you want to marry her and Satan says, exactly, let the plan work. He will help facilitate your marriage, not because he likes your marriage. He knows that when you are married, a child will come and the reality will dawn on you. Now you marry as a prayer warrior and a war giant. And then your wife says, my husband, sorry. My parents are coming and we need a place to keep them. Am I God? Am I the only person on earth? See that? And before you know it, your life begins to be in shambles. One day you will find yourself browsing the internet. Mantras for wealth. Enter. You, you will never believe you would have done that zodiac sign the palm of my hand what does it mean let me know whether they cost me from bed and they say put your age and you say I, I don't even i'm not sure they told me i'm 30 but the way i'm suffering is as if i'm 40 let me try 40 and see you see that you are laughing but you know you do it because it's the pain how many prayer leaders how many pastors, by the grace of God, send me text messages all the time saying, Apostle, I don't, I'm, I'm about to give up. People may not know. They just see me praying and preaching, but I'm tired. Let me tell you the truth. I say it before God, and I say it truthfully. This challenged me because I said it means there's something wrong. Let me tell you this. If you sit down and see your child dying, you will not know when you will do something you never believe you cannot do. You may not do it for yourself. Was it not two women that ate their children? What made them eat their children? Hunger. They ate one whole child. A mother that cannot forget her suckling child didn't cut herself. They would have cut one leg. At least the person is still alive. But they ate the baby alive. 
and the next day it was to eat the child. Look at the, from Genesis to Revelation, see what hunger did to men. Study what hunger did to men from Genesis to Revelation. Was it not because of hunger Israel went to Egypt? Who took them to Egypt? Not demons. God's covenant people went to Satan. They said, buy us. Money failed. Hunger can take men from Israel to Egypt. Are there not places that some of us are walking today that you sit down and say, but why should I be walking here? I know what happens in this corporation. I know that God is not glorified. I know they are serving the devil. I know that the products and services they are involved in, my, it violates my faith. But the day you talk to your husband or wife that I think I should live here, the day you say that thing again, it's with the back of my hand that will slap you. Did you see the last PTA letter of the child? And Satan says, that's it. And a time will come out of that pain and frustration the young lady will call her ex-boyfriend and say, just to know if you are fine. He said, lie, hunger, taking men from Israel to Egypt. Are we together? This is what I saw coming to Nigeria. This is what I saw coming to Africa. I saw a time and not too distant time when hunger is driving people to do things you cannot believe because the many doors of corruption were just closed this is what i saw in my vision and because most men only corrupt they steal and share and then they steal and share then when you get your own you quickly manage it well but now that the door is closed people are saying what do we do and I saw people going to this woman to say, I need members. If I don't get members, where will I get offering? And then where will I get tight to be able to survive as a church? So Babylon, let's negotiate. Bring members to get more overflows. My soul will be what will be in exchange. If you ever say this cannot happen, you are joking. Do you know the desperation do you know what men can do when they are desperate? Read your Bible and see what... They were willing to go back to Egypt when they were hungry. They left Egypt. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed. When they were hungry, they said, we remember. We remember the garlic. We... Hunger will make you forget the promised land. Hunger will make you love your yesterday more than your tomorrow. I remember when I had this boyfriend. I wasn't going to heaven, but I was in heaven on earth. Now that I gave my life to Christ and left this guy, look at how miserable my life is. Oh, let us go back. There is garlic. There is cucumber. Is it not in your Bible? And onions. At least we have food to eat. Moses, we are hungry. Was it not on account of supply that Moses missed the promised land? Have you forgotten that they were thirsty and they needed water and they had been nagging at Moses? No leader can survive a hungry people. I don't mean spiritually hungry. They will nag at you and disturb you day and night. You know, there are people who come to my house. They just come and knock. They knock the gate and stand there. I just open the door and they say, I'm hungry. Sometimes they come as a group group of children and just knock and stand here. Do what you would do with us. We are hungry. That's what happened to Moses. And Moses was, God told him, speak to the rock. He was human. Your humanity plus hunger is not good. And he struck the rock. And God said, no, this is it. You are not going to the promised land. It was hunger that made them build an idol. They said, Moses, we are tired. We are not sure that is this your God you saw in the bush that brought us out. Please, Aaron, come. Put jewelries together. We will sacrifice our gold. Build us an idol so that we will dance and say you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. 
Was it not on account of hunger many parents now stop going to church? And they say, where was God when they sacked me from Railway Corporation 1999? Where was God when I was crying with my sick child on the bed, needing 150,000 to... I, I prayed and I called on pastors, they prayed and I watched my child breathe his last breath on something that could be solved. Don't talk to me about church again. You come to preach and they show you the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and tell you, look, before you were born, I was a prayer coordinator. Hunger made me leave the place of God to Egypt. You don't control people by controlling them. You control them by controlling the economy of their territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower will always be slave to the lender. You will thank me for what I'm teaching you tomorrow. You will thank me. Because you are listening to this message for your children. You are not just listening for yourself. It will take a selfish and a wicked person to not listen to these truths. Then don't have children. Because woe betide any man. I say this respectfully to our parents and the elderly people here. But most of our parents made this mistake. And that is the... The mistake that has produced a negative history for many of the young people seated here looking at me it was hunger that created the episodes of pain that we do not even want to remember about our lives don't transfer that to your children hunger made people to marry those who are not the will of god Hunger made people to be relocated to geographic territories that was not the will of god hunger made people to change their age you will see somebody 50 years by instincts you know this person is 50 years he said no he's 27 he, he, you, you see that how many footballers have their true age I'm so, so you don't think I'm just talking that's what hunger can do how many people join occultic fraternities the fact that they are growing in I hope I'm right I had that early this year they were stealing ladies underwears or something like that now listen that is not a good news is to tell you that men are not ashamed to prosper did you hear what i said let a lady pile her clothes and say you should wash and you see if you are angry but the native doctor said go and carry not not the head tie carry the underwear and bring it and the man is not embarrassed you can pick that underwear as a graduate, as a bubble, and bounce with it to a shrine because you are desperate for prosperity. Which one is easier, to believe God or to do that nonsense? What shall it profit a man? I don't want to get to a point where at the end of my life, I have acquired cars and houses, Koinonia has risen and I look at myself and I look at my soul and my soul is dead. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his money went with him? Koinonia, talk to me. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his real estate disappeared and followed him in the grave? No. Any prosperity that demands your soul to get is of the devil. Let me tell you many ways that this business because this business has franchise and one of the way the franchise works is by occupying you with activities that will not let you have time for God is that not your soul being sold it doesn't have to be an occultic negotiation by the time you have to forfeit a Sunday service where your word is about to come because if you don't your boss will sack you that's your soul going you do that for one year you find out you can't remember one memory verse again you are praying and you will be quoting wise sayings instead of scriptures because you have not hidden any word in your heart again what shall it profit a man I want to show you one more mystery and then we'll pray is God speaking to you Tonight's call is a serious wake-up call for the sake of our children and our children's children and for the sake of our soul. Why do you think the Antichrist will live 
all other things and go to economy when you talk about the mark of the beast what did the bible says the mark was meant for for buying and selling not for going to school not for bible study the devil knows that where he will get people how did they get nigerians to register bbn was it not by the threat of their accounts did, did any police carry cane to pursue any man register your bvn or your account will be frozen and people just come and say please what i did my bvn in the night they opened the bank for me by 8 30 because i couldn't come in the day people will lay and harass me 8 30 in the night they opened the bank for me and said apostle come and do your bvn as anointed as holy i still did bvn in the night When Satan comes to you and finds out that your individualism is not your concern, he will attack your spirituality. When he attacks your spirituality by making you fall from that height, remember that was the temptation, fall from that height, God will protect you. And when you survive that, he knows where to wait for you. He says, keep praying. You will meet me at one junction that is the only road. Only road. He meets you at that junction. It's not a T-junction, it's a bend. And he waits there and says, now, let me negotiate your child's school fees. Let me negotiate. Give me your prayer life and I will give you real estate. Give me the health of your child. Have you not heard of people who have sold different parts of their body for money? Please talk to me. Is it a lie? Give me your fasting and your appetite for God and I will make sure I give you a job in Dubai. And you say, is that the condition? Satan will not come and say, give me your soul like your soul, your heart. Uh -uh. Give me your commitment in the house of God and I will increase your money by 50,000. And he said, commitment, go places. Satan, give me. And Satan is an honest businessman. You will get it. He will give you the 50,000. Then remove commission that will make everything remain 10,000. And say, if you want, I'm still here for business. And before you know it, from settling near Sodom, you will be in the middle of Sodom. What took you there? Why do you think the Bible says, whose God is their belly? The logical thing should be, whose God is their brain? But he said, whose God? Hunger can be a God. And it can make men do things they never plan to do. Are we together? I was sharing with the leaders a little bit about the cost for just transporting people every meeting day and every other time the school of ministry, everything for one year is what some people used to build houses. But that's what a part of the budget of a department. And never has anybody come to say, stand up. All of you, drop 1,000 by force. If you don't drop, no prophecy or no sin apostle. Never will it be. Never. If you ever hear it anywhere, know you are dreaming, wake up. That I ever tell anybody, here is my bucket. Drop two naira and then you see me to receive prayer. May God take my life a day to doing that. You won't say amen because you are kind. I want to make heaven. I will pray it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who are experts who provide value and are paid and blessed for it. That's not what I'm saying. When people dispense value that is packaged, they should be rewarded. So don't confuse that with what I'm saying. I'm saying to say bring money as the basis for prayer. No, sir. Thy money perish with you. That's what he told by Jesus. Are we together? But if I don't have food to eat, all this mouth that I've carried my big mouth to make, I would twist that statement by the time hunger is serious. If your mother calls you and your mother says, my son or my daughter, is this how you are going to leave me? Remember the womb that bought you. You will carry basket and stand there and say, what is, 
come and drop your money Jerry. I'm, I'm preaching I'm doing everything for you free most people who do what they do are not bad they just do not know the systems that bail men out say in the name of Jesus my soul and my pocket will both be healthy what shall it profit a man if you are going into ministry please listen to me with all your heart because if you believe your your ministry you know men of god have funny ways they believe ministry will be financed they just believe one day one arbitrary kingdom financier will just evolve from somewhere and just say you keep preaching while i keep giving you money <laughs> My brothers and my sisters, God gives us wisdom to save us from trouble. The Bible says wisdom is a defense. Is that true? There are sermons you will never be able to preach when you become a beggar. Are we together? Yes. May you never get to a point, man of God, where your members become the Holy Spirit. Where somebody comes and says, here's a check of 10 million. I notice that people don't respect elders. And that becomes your message. The title of my message as revealed by the Holy Ghost is respect. No, it came from an angry rich man. Go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house. And I will take pleasure in it. Are we together now? Let me show you something. Thank you, Sam. Ezra chapter 3. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my all, and I lay my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. Now let me show you a very deep mystery. That mountain. Ezra will read one to three and then you'll jump to seven. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man in Jerusalem. Reading to three and then we'll jump to seven. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the, the priest and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of God, of the God of Israel, and to offer bond offerings thereon and it is written in the as it is written in the law of moses the man of god three and they set the altar upon his basis and fear was upon them because the people of the, because of the people of those countries and they offered bond offerings thereon unto the lord and bond offerings morning and evening go to seven now i want you to listen carefully look up and they gave money also to the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre. Take note. I want to show you something powerful. To bring what? Cedar trees from Lebanon. Go up the mountain. Bring wood. Build me a house. Now it says they gave them money to go and bring cedar trees. According to the grant that they had had of Cyrus, the king of Persia. But notice, they did business with certain people. Now, not exchanging their soul. But the Bible says, unto them of Zidon and unto them of Tyre. Follow me. Isaiah 23. You will notice the Bible very strangely talks of a city called Tyre and Sidon. Have you read your Bible? 
the bible talks a lot about these cities i will show you that these cities represented the center of commerce and economy in the earth isaiah 23 the first three verses the burden of where tire now look up please we're walking the word haul ye the ships of tarshish for it is laid waste so that there is no house no entering in from the land of shittim it is revealed to them we are reading to three two be still ye inhabitants of the isle thou whom the merchants of zidon that pass over the sea have replenished verse three i wish we could read it in amplified or any other version he said and by the great waters the seed of Sihor, the harvest of the river is her revenue and she tire is the merchant the word mat there is the merchant of the nations there's no other version you can find oh dear okay he says was tyre's revenue can you see there he said and she tyre became the merchandise that is the city the center of economy of the nations are we together what was satan called in isaiah 28 who is the king of tyre talk to me who is the king of tyre the very king of that mountain satan himself the governor the protector of that mountain tyre and sidon the economic center of the earth satan allows other demons and other spirits to occupy other mountains but he takes the mountain of economy and becomes the king of tyre i will wait there whoever comes will meet me there he will not meet a demon he will not meet an archangel he will not meet anyone he will meet satan himself listen i can tell you where satan is he's not in your village no i know where he is he's at the center of where the exchange happens for the house of god to be built i know where satan is satan is where your resources should come from to make sure your family stays in peace that's where he is i know where satan is satan is at the point where your business needs to grow so that it will cause you to negotiate satan is obsessed about economy my brothers and my sisters please listen to me listen to me listen to me listen to me if you do not sustain an ability i'm going to round up tonight by teaching you the system the warfare dimension upon that mountain because although satan is there god still says climb the mountain climb the mountain was it not on the mountain both elijah and the prophet met but elijah returned back victorious was it not on the mount of transfiguration jesus climbed and he returned back and together with the three guys many things happened in the mountain and one of it is the victory of the saints economically the silver is mine the gold is mine I, I i i pray from the depth of my heart that you will understand what i've said and see the value of it in your life it will surprise you my brothers and my sisters when men are leaving god selling their souls to the devil and you stand together with your wife and your children and you say lord i give you the glory in fact let's go to daniel chapter 3 daniel chapter 3 nebuchadnezzar the king just go back to king, to uh, king james so that we'll hurry up we're praying is god blessing someone nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of what talk to me please an image of gold whose height is 90 feet and he set it up in a plain called dura in the province of babylon read on the bible says and nebuchadnezzar now look at this nebuchadnezzar first set up a 90 feet statue of pure gold 
then look at all the people he gathered look at the quality of men that he gathered to come and bow down to that thing are you ready he sent a letter to gather what the princes read on and the governors and the captains and the judges judiciary and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs local government chairman and the rulers of provinces to come to the dedication if you were not influential you were not invited satan wants to dedicate his image in the land and handpick certain people to say you are invited listen it was on account of that that certain gentlemen let me show you yourself now verse 3 blessed be the name of the lord when we read verse 3 let's go to verse 6 very instructive statement then the princes the governors the captains judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before please go back to verse 3 let's finish first and they stood before the image that nebuchadnezzar had set up verse 6 now read it for me this is exactly why i am preaching all that i've been preaching read if you're a christian and whoso falleth not down and worshiped shall the same hour be cast into the midst why is economies use the term financial meltdown not financial cool cool off or ice ice uh, what do we call it now financial meltdown is that true If God grants grace, I will teach you something powerful. Because you know, the Holy Spirit just ministered something. You know when Jesus crossed to the other side, the pigs were on a mountain. That, and they possessed, the pigs were roaming around the mountain. Pigs in the Bible stand for unclean animals. They were on the mountain and there was a spirit in a madman. As soon as Jesus came, watch this. Immediately the the madman met Jesus when he casted out the demons. The demons said, don't take us out of here. And they entered the pigs and everything went down. Who were those who attacked Jesus? The merchants. They said, you are doing something to our economy. By delivering one person, something happened to their economy. They said, get out of this land quickly. It was not the politician. It was those who were in the economy that felt the heat. When you read in the Bible, there was a time they flogged Paul in the market square. They dragged him to a market square, not a police station, and flogged him in the market square. My brothers and my sisters, there are mysteries in our world. If it is economy you want to conquer, the little knowledge and the certificate you are holding will not go very far. If you listen to what I'm telling you, you will rise as if you are holding a charm. If you sit down there, this thing will squeeze you in a way. Whosoever will not fall down and bow and worship that image, the same hour, what is the punishment? Be cast into a financial recession. If you will not bow to God, then the devil does something to your finances. Seven, Jesus. <laughs> Mighty God. Let's go to verse eight. Wherefore, at that certain time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Nine. And they spake to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Listen carefully now. O king, live forever. Ten. O king has, has made a decree. Thou, O king, has made a decree that this and that and that and that happens. Eleven. And all of that, whosoever does not fall will do this. Verse 12. There are certain Jews. This is where we come in now. Listen carefully. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs. So they were men of influence. 
there are certain attacks that never come to you until you are influential so the fact that it has not come does not mean it's just that you have not made any mark for the kingdom enough to warrant that attack it's not a sign that your faith is working there are many people that because the devil just left you to do your thing you believe that is because of your intelligence it's just that you are not making any mark whatsoever in the realm of the spirit and so you are not disturbed but the day god blesses you small and they say you are now promoted to become a manager that's the day you have a dream you never had you just had that your father said he had the dream once and you recorded it on that day a stranger comes and said let me introduce myself to you i appeared to your father 35 years ago look at his life and i appeared to your mother 36 years ago now you have qualified for my appearance by your promotion you have gone too far let's talk and you wake up ah, blood of jesus i just bind you and then the next thing you go to the office the next day and they say sorry some people stole money and they found some money on your desk go down and the man says i told you bow to me or rise but if you learn what I'm showing you now, you can stand and say, Satan, this is my money. This is my gold. But I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Satan, it's not that I'm too proud to bow. It won't be to you. My refusal to bow is not arrogance. It's that it can't be to you. I cannot serve God and mammon. No, sir. Let it not be that I'm trying to run a parallel government with God. My refusal to bow is not pride. But this is what I'm saying, that there is one who is worthy of my praise. Sarkin <laughs> Salama Listen, I come from a family where these forces don't stop you to rise. Just go ahead and rise. There is a level, you know how a rubber ring is. Listen carefully. You can pull it. You get to a point where it will swing you back in one day. So people rise up, oh, educated. My father started working at age 26. But when you get to a point, something happens. You know how the swine just fell down and crashed into the sea. That's how your whole life, finances, everything crashes down. What were they looking for? Bow to me and I will give you the keys. But they were certain koinonia members. Shadrach, Meshach, Joshua Selman. He said, this man, O king, have not regarded thee. Listen, they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image. There are certain men who are prospering strangely in Zaria. And we have researched well and we found out that they don't serve idols. They love God with all their heart and yet they are rising. Oh king, give an answer. Because I thought you said for anybody to rise, their soul must go. But we have found certain people their soul prospers as their finances prosper. The more they help their parents, they are rising. The more they, they are blessed prosperously. They use that money and they are still fasting and praying even as millionaires. Oh king, give an answer. And the king said, you mean it? Bring the boys. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury stop. It will never tire me to share with you my vision. I don't share too many of my experiences. Remember I told you, I know what this means. It was in this area that I was praying and fasting and crying before God. 
and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and then here comes a strange being like a dinosaur and looks at me the eyes is as one eye is as big as the head of a man two eyes fiery red eyes and the tail was a snake it had its own life although it was attached to that being and the being was looking at me and i was looking at it my god i didn't bargain for this what is all this now what is this i'm a preacher that is just teaching truth and wants to help people and make meaning out of my life and this spirit looks at me that was when i knew that in the realm of the spirit there is a soul thermometer they measure the rising of men listen i tell you this my brothers and my sisters believe it when you are rising there is a system i will show you shortly by the time you rise to any significant level beyond certain threshold there will be an invitation of certain guests and they will say gentlemen we have watched you we started watching your grandfather since he was a reverend we watch your grandmother as a prayer warrior nobody rose beyond this level what is these tongues you always pray every night and these koinonia messages you are always listening to uh, they are doing something that is threatening our continuity in your family when that spirit appeared i looked at it it was looking at me and this is what it said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance that was the conversation wow what devil is this it was from that day i knew that men can be gatekeepers they can you don't knock when you have a key you only knock so that you somebody who has the key will open but when you have a key the bible says you should knock because you don't have the key but when you have the key knocking ends it was in 2007 i had a vision many things happened in that vision but that was when the lord revealed to me his wealth agenda for the church I, i'm not i'm not i'm not i mean people like ejimi are really the ones anointed with the mantle and the grace for wealth i'm just somebody who knows god and understands the counsel of god like paul i have met these spirits i know they are real so when i talk i don't talk because i read a book no i've seen it you see there are things that when you see you don't fear again what, what are you going to be afraid of the pride of men men that are like vapor from that day something happened to me and i will give you the keys of david he says and you shall open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open you see let me tell you it is part of the burden of the apostolic ministry that god mandates you to laboriously go through that pain but it's not for yourself it is for the sake please be sensitive listen there is a grace from that encounter when i got that thing i knew case closed not for me not for the ministry these horns will never lift up themselves their heads again my brothers and my sisters in any case you must give your soul to someone bow to me otherwise you will enter the fiery furnace do you now see why christians are the ones suffering more aside from our pride and our refusal the devil particularly made sure that he takes our case personal the moment you are making an altar call they are watching you from the realm of the spirit you come out and say lord take my heart take my life lord i know i come from a family of 70 people and nobody ever handed their lives to you but lord let me be the first i give you everything and when you are in your room praying alone Lord, I will change, I will rewrite the history of my family. 
that thermometer is rising in the spirit and is being watched you think you are alone but there are witnesses and a day will come when you will just say lord i vow to you that no matter what you give me you will be lord over it the devil will say no come quickly meet this guy this kind of commitment is the same thing as selling your soul to the devil Halakbara, you are the mighty God. Hey, Latobiju, you are the glory. Halakbara, hey, you are the mighty God. Hey, Latobiju, you are the glory. Halakbara. One more time. Listen. Listen to me. Please listen. Every time you pass through faces and realms in the spirit, you are given three things. One, you are given keys, a symbol of access. Two, you are given an anointing to bring men into that experience. Three, you are given an enlarged audience in the spirit. God will cause men to hear what you are saying. These are the blessings of sacrifice and the furnace of affliction in the spirit. Don't just see people getting blessed and think they were lucky or that they are just business people who understand business. It's more than that, my brothers and my sisters. Some of the people you see are forged from the furnace of affliction. I have seen spirits and I have met with devils. I know. We are not financially dull, but we know that there is a warfare dimension fighting for the soul of men we are able to focus today and teach the truth of god's word and not coerce any man under the sun to give because god has been faithful and he continues to be faithful there are keys that you hold that you will never fear their fears you will never call what they call conspiracy conspiracy we are not talking of this money mongering thing this appetite and loss for wealth that can make men kill for money please don't mistake in what i'm teaching that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching a battle for your soul that satan is using money to fight your soul he used your past it did not work he used your bloodline it did not work now he's coming by himself to fight A woman, because of hunger, said, take my children as collateral. That's what Satan wants. The wife of a prophet, even in a man of God's house, there can be hunger. Even in a prophet's house, there can be hunger. I came tonight to blow a trumpet in Zion and to sound the alarm upon a mountain. When I saw this in the visions of the Lord, I knew that if I don't teach this, there is trouble. Brothers and sisters, hear what I say. I saw hunger coming. I saw it. I'm not a false prophet. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not one person who will come out every time and tell you God said God did this. No. But I saw hunger manipulated by the gates of hell. It has nothing to do with economy or political party. This is Satan. And the hunger continues to bring annoyance. Listen, that hunger, Satan is bringing that hunger to scandalize a lot of men of God. That hunger will attempt to scandalize many ministries. Because people will begin to rise up to say, let's probe the account of this church. Let's probe the account of this man of God. And in it, many people will be found wanting. This is why the Lord is teaching this. So that there can be a system of escape. Because many of us are already following that route. 
because of hunger you don't know the difference between your account and your fellowship account you can fetch from anyone and say god forgive me when i grow I'll, I'll manage it this is what the devil is planning and he will continue to make you in lack so that you implicate yourself and one day when you are well implicated he will boomerang you that's the mistake that many people have made today and it will take the grace and the mercy of god you see these things i speak i speak in parables Hunger will make many people dip their hands in a pot that is meant for God. Hophni and Phinehas, they were just supposed to use the pruning fork to pick something out for themselves. But hunger made them to select the portions and brought ruin and destruction to their lives. Go up the mountain and bring wood. Is money not made out of wood? Is paper not made out of wood? He tells you the location. You must go up the mountain. I will take another. There will be a part two of this. But there is a warfare dimension. And I want you to pray. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. There are gatekeepers. The king of Tyre himself is seated there. By the time your father tried to get there, and this thing struck them down but now you have come we have no time like the three hebrew boys oh king we will not bow i will be blessed yet my soul will also prosper i will not trade my integrity as a christian for money lift your voice and pray i like you to blast in tongues Jabaranda skaparo seketo skabarakata Jabrenda koto skaparakato seketea The kings of the earth who have benefited from their harlotry with her shall wail and say alas Babylon that great city in one hour is your destruction come Shabakatakata are you praying? hallelujah listen listen to me hallelujah listen it is never about lack of job it is never about lack of house rent money it is never about your business crashing or your business failing it is never about lack of customers you are in a warfare that you are not aware of it's a fight not for your money for your soul satan how can hold on please how can satan be fighting for money that's nonsense he's only using money to fight for your soul my brothers and my sisters what shall it profit a man i say it again there are many people about losing their soul because of business losing their soul because of money losing their soul listen I like you to pray and say lord as for me my allegiance for you and with you is in life and in death lift your voice and pray Rakatosekete, 
Kata prontosko pereke teke toka shegete babana. Anta prato se sekete 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 preke te ne kaka barokata. Samloto so preke te ne kota. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh God. You are my El Shaddai. I decree. And I declare. That what you cannot give me. I will never receive it from anyone. Anywhere you do not take me. May I not go. Whatever you do not give me, may I never get it. Lord, I declare that the dimensions of wealth and prosperity needed for my life and your house pass it through me. Lift your voice and pray. May I become your treasurer. A steward of your resources. Sapakatos ke lebaratos, embrakatos ke brates asekete kato baratos. Pass it through me, O God. Pass it through me, O God. May I be a steward, trusted. With the resources of heaven, trusted with the resources of heaven, trusted. Makatoske brakatoshe ketelekata. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare that my children and all those who will come from me. All those connected from, to me, because of my life, they will never beg for bread. Lift your voice and pray. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. My children will never beg for bread. Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray. And while we are praying, I'm going to give our sisters an instruction. Lay your hands on your womb. And while you are praying, tell yourself, you, I cut off my children from poverty forever. Whether you have a child or not, everyone lift your voice and pray. I cut off my children from the lineage of poverty the lineage of hardship I will not give birth to children who will be beggars I will not give birth to children who will serve Satan because of the need for resources Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Please give us Psalm 112. Quickly, please. Psalm 112. We're rounding up. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It starts with the fear of God. It doesn't start with a business idea. It starts with the fear of the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation until both your seed and generation. We are not talking of food to eat. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you this. The body of Christ is full of selfish people who just have enough to eat. They have enough to take a flight. They have enough to pay their rent. And so they think it is okay. You are a selfish person. Do not make the mistake of Esther to forget that you are also part of the Jews. When her man wanted to destroy the Jews, Esther said, I'm comfortable. And Mordecai said, do not think that when they finish with us, you will be free. There are families and there are individuals that are not begging for bread. So when they hear this kind of teaching, they say it's a waste of time. It's a wicked thing as a man of God. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart. There are some of you who have come here now with envelopes, with seeds inside waiting to bless me as a man of God and I appreciate it and it will be wicked if you are blessing me as a man of God and I don't empower you to prosper how do you get the resources are you thieves I'm able to preach and I'm able to spend time with God because my needs are met my family is taken care of and then I can focus to serve the Lord and bless you. If the devil uses economic empowerment to scatter those things, my time will be spent on intercession for money rather than I will now leave the ministry of the word and start doing the matter of tables. I will never be the man of God who will raise men who are spiritually powerful and then economically down no when you start a move like this you are usually misunderstood until you see the excellency of a balanced spiritual life and the convenience that it provides for you and your family his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed next verse wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness his soul will still prosper. That you can be a billionaire and yet your heart is completely not in those resources. You sit down and hear that a ministry wants to build and without coercion you write a check of a billion naira and say please all these night vigils of praying, bombing heaven, there are souls to be saved. There are teachings, there are, dis there are nations to disciple. Let me tell you, one of the worst distractions that can happen to the body is when they focus on talking about money, money, every time, every service, money. It's a cause and it's a distraction. Every service cannot be money. Now you see even evangelistic meetings, after raising um, winning souls, as soon as the souls are busy writing their names, they start raising offering. I don't blame the men of God. I'm not insulting them. But I'm saying that's not the way it's to be done. This is what gives license to men in the world to continue to abuse and harass any man of God anywhere. But my brothers and sisters, there are people that will do it right now. Empowered by the Spirit. That the level and the extent of the blessing of God upon your life will dumbfound principalities and powers. Yet your heart will never be lifted up. Your heart is still contract because you have pledged your allegiance to Christ and Christ alone. Last prayer point for tonight. The controlling powers manipulating my financial resources. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. The controlling powers ensuring that I fail in business. The controlling powers ensuring that everything I do fails. Makado sekete breke to shalakata pray the controlling powers that ensure
that every good thing becomes negative in my life I come against you by the God of heaven Hallelujah. Listen. The next time I will, it continues, we have to stop. What you have heard tonight is only one side of the coin. You must hear the other side. You run like this with this one side alone. You are running on one leg. As powerful as what I've shared is. This is a ministry of balance. I will show you the other side where many of us fail. But then it is sufficient for you to know tonight that the fight for wealth is not a fight for your pocket. It's a fight for your soul. Poverty has nothing to do with hunger. It is only a strategy to get your soul eventually. So prosperity also is not really about your pocket. It is also about a system of preservation of your soul. most of us are not aware of how many things on earth really depend on men there are so many things on earth that do not depend on god but the world of men is where the allowance or the disallowance happens and this is a deep mystery because god made it so did you know that you can have a vision of you being delivered and you being blessed? The challenge is that the miracle you want to receive does not just come generically. You see, the miracle you want to receive must be lower than the level of death I have gone through to really reach you the way it left heaven. If you are faced with a situation that is higher than the death level of that vessel, as mighty as God is, that vessel will not be able to receive the richness of what was sent to heaven. This is more than just being anointed. This is becoming a conduit for greater, heavier, and weightier dimensions of the possibilities of God to reach men. I arrived and my eyes was almost full of tears as I saw the crowds of people. I know you came to see God. We agree. It is true. But you can imagine in a meeting where people start and welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet burdens remain there. Challenges remain there until a man shows up. And then the burdens begin to go. God was there right from beginning of the service. Are we together now? This is very powerful. And every time God grants us the privilege to grow and to transit in the spirit, we rejoice not just for ourselves alone, but that we have been able to capture greater dimensions of possibilities for the sake of the saints. So that what could not be solved yesterday can now be solved today. This is the beauty of growth. This is the beauty of power. This is the only justification why people should continue to listen and receive from a man. It should be predicated on the fact that there is an intentional commitment to grow, to expand, to be able to host more of God. Nina Sir King Salama. Nina Salam. 
When God speaks, listen, the dynamics of the working of his word is that mediating between God, the communicator of that dimension, and man who is the final recipient, there must be man. And this is where the problem usually is. The problem is not with the power of God. The problem is not with the wisdom of God. The problem is the limitation of the vessels that he has to make do with. Are we together now? So the greater the death, the more the life, the power in experience of the reality of the Christ. Here's what the Bible says. Now unto him who is able to do, listen, exceeding, abundantly, far above all we ask or think. Then it says, according to the power, not that works in him, that works in us. He is able to do. There's no problem with his ability. But that ability, the manifestation is limited by the power that works in us. The dam can supply water. The borehole can supply water. But what enters your bucket finally is the size of the opening from the nozzle of the tap. If the tap is open so small, it can make the dam look limited. And you can be receiving drops of water and you will have to make do with what is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so God wants to cap this revelation of this mystery of fruitfulness in our lives. God wants to wrought mighty deliverance. What is deliverance? A separation from the obstacle, the impedance that stands before you, around you. The obstacles don't have to be spirits. They can be situations. Hallelujah. If you are giving a death sentence in terms of a medical report, that report is looking for the power of God. Remember, we have taught here that the real activator of the possibilities of God is his divine power. His divine power flows through the channel of faith. But the final mystery that works the wonders is his divine power. The Bible says, according as his divine power that hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Tonight gathered here are several people with conditions that only God knows and only God can tell. But one thing I can tell you is that the king of glory is in this place. And not only the king of glory is in this place, the vessels that he has so engraced are also in this place. It is not a popular revelation in the church. Every time people say God is here, they are right. But the presence of the vessels that will be used by that God is often trivialized. Men are very powerful and they are very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, burdens will fall. Tonight, yokes will be destroyed. Tonight, God will turn the lives of people around. Hear me. There are things that have no business happening in your life that will be made to happen. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Please understand this. 
creation did not stop. There is nowhere in the Bible that God stopped creating. Mm -mm. Creation, God only took a break. But creation continues. Not just plants and animals. To create means to make material, to create a scenario out of nothing. You have no business getting a job before the year runs. But the world can create. You have no business coming out of pain. You have no business. But the word, the Rima word, revealed, backed by the power of God. You have no business being healed today. But the Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint means to set the date when it happens. Not only to reveal that it will happen, to make it happen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please hear me. Shake away unbelief from your mind as we begin to pray. Don't let the, the devil will use the flesh. This is not the first time you are attending a miracle service, he will tell you. This is not the first time men of God are praying for you. The moment those things come, you have the responsibility of fortifying your mind. Your refuse, reject it. You can insist by faith that tonight is my night. You can insist by faith. Father, the grace that has not come upon my life before tonight is the night it will come. Lord, the dimension that have not been opened to yet, this is the night I will receive. Hear me. Hear me. There are no special days for anybody. It is your faith that makes it special. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, any day can be that today. Mm. Are we together? Blind Bartimeo is at the way towards Jericho. And Jesus will be passing for the last time. And the guy would have said one day he will come back again. And he would have missed it. The Bible says he cried. He cried, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looks at him and with what you would think is sarcasm, he said, what should I do for you? And then he says to regain my sight. And that man regained his sight. Only people who insist with understanding receive anything. Hoping and wishing that God will touch me is a waste of time. We'll share the grace and you'll go back frustrated. But there are people who have come. Some of you have been fasting. Some of you traveled from outside of this nation within this nation with hunger there are people standing outside people following online why will you allow the service finish and you just go back like that you are a man of God you have come from far why don't you carry something of substance that you can go back with as a witness that you met with the power of God is God speaking to us one scripture and then we'll pray Isaiah 61. This is a scripture that is very powerful. The hand of God is moving in overflow one. I continue to see this thing. Overflow one. I'm seeing it's an impartation. It's not just a deliverance. There is a pouring of graces that is coming on specific people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had ordained the word anointed there is ordained ordained me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All, not some, three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, giving them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Go to verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. 
I believe in the power of God. I believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the limitless dimension of what the Spirit of God can do upon it. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man? He says, the power of the highest shall overshadow, not come upon, overshadow. You are under the influence of the Spirit of God. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that cannot happen. Please listen to me. Under the influence of the Spirit, time can be compressed. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there are things that should not happen, but can happen. Now the Lord is that spirit, the Bible says. This Lord we have been talking about is that spirit. Not just the Father seated on the throne. The Lord who delivered the righteous. The Lord who anoints is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is, you will know that he is there by the miracles. You know that he is there, not just because you ask him to come alone. You are here. Working miracles, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. Releasing destinies, I worship you, I worship you. in a place not just because you believe by faith but there are tokens there are representations that attest to and validate the fact that he's in the midst of his people listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters tonight you are in for an encounter you are in for an experience it's a shift in the spirit and i want you to believe we are immersed in an atmosphere of limited possibilities limitless possibilities do not allow the devil to lie to you that your case is so great that god cannot meet you that god cannot touch you let god be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah now, but listen, I learned this from Pastor Benny Hinn. I will share this briefly and then we'll begin to pray. Having worked in the healing ministry for more than half of a century, Benny Hinn shared that one of the challenges he had observed with people when the power of God begins to move is they are not ready to release the pain the sickness, the infirmity. You will think just because you are in God's presence and you expect him to touch you, to heal you, he will not take something from you that you are still holding back. This mystery was demonstrated in the woman with the alabaster box. When she came to Jesus, the Bible says it was made of spikenard, pure nard, a year's wages. She broke it at his feet and it became an instrument of worship there are people who come with medical reports they come with pain they are just coming to inform god that this is what they are going through they are not ready for the exchange yet listen this is a very simple but powerful spiritual key when you come to god the bible says the instruction is to believe that he exists number two that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him how does he reward there must always be an exchange your weakness for his strength the miracle the testimony 
Are we together now? So you must be able to hand over everything. Here's how the Bible puts it. All my cares and burdens unto you. I That's a part of the song that is powerful. Lord, I come to you with this array of family challenges. I'm handing it over to you. I don't expect to go empty. There are many people, whether God touches you or not, you will go back full because you didn't give him anything. Until you transfer the burden, the sickness, the Bible says, cast all your cares. It didn't say God will do it. It is your responsibility to say, Lord, I'm tired of carrying this infirmity. I'm tired of carrying this evil report. I bring it before you and I cast it down. When you are now empty, God says, I now exchange that which you have brought for what I have brought. Nobody comes before God empty. And God does not come before any man empty. The problem is there must be willingness for the exchange. God will not rest upon you when your hands are full, when your mind is full. Listen, it is very important. You are a man of God here. If all you come to give God is frustration of ministry, Lord, the church is not growing. Lord, this and that, that's, that, mm -mm, that's not the issue. Lord, I hand over everything. So it's time to carry your bills that is killing you and surrender it before him. It, listen, it's time to take the sickness. It's time to take the, all the concerns. Don't take some and leave some. Carry everything. Ah, I cast my crown before the highest When your hands are too heavy, you cannot receive anything. You will need to take away, bring the report from your office. Bring the report from a doctor. Bring everything. When you lay it at his feet, you now lift your hand ready to receive the healing, the miracle. You don't come before God just to inform him. No. God is not interested in just being aware. He's interested in doing something. Cast your care. Listen. Coming to God and releasing everything is proof of faith. That you come before him and say, Lord, if you do not help me, I don't know where the house rent is coming from. We are 11 in this family and it's clear that there is a yoke upon this family. You may think, listen, you may think because you are always appearing before him, it means you are casting your care. No. You have to intentionally 
consciously say lord i don't want this sickness again take it i'm tired of this life of poverty and failure i'm tired of this life without results are we together now yes and one of the ways that we cast our care is through worship another way that we cast our care is through prayer very powerful you can pray and say lord take everything take everything tired of the burden of ministry tired of the burden of my family this is not how you designed me to work take it and then when you are now empty remember when there was no more vessel the oil stopped are we together tonight it does not take god anything to lift you it does not take god anything to bless you it does not take god anything to cause men to bless and honor and lift you listen Benny Hinn said that many people come to his healing crusades and they are ever conscious of their sicknesses, conscious of their infirmity, and even when the power of God is flowing, the fortitude for reception is not there because they are busy meditating. The size of this problem, can God solve it? And God is wondering and saying, who told you, who, who educated you about me? Who told you about me? The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth tonight God is able to transform tonight God is able to heal hallelujah to transform and to heal apostle you don't understand the gravity of my situation that's why it's your mind and your perception that is being enlarged by the power of darkness when God comes the Bible says the mountains keep skip and he clears a way for you. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'll give us two prayer points before I begin to minister. And I want us to please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer is you are going to ask the Lord. Listen carefully. You are going to ask the Lord to do something to your faith tonight. I agree and I concur that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty. You will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds, how will God navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me? Are we together now? This is where the spirit of faith comes. The faith of God. It says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. You're going to pray, Lord, my faith is strong. I believe you. I believe you. Lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Tonight, my faith is strong. I believe that this is the night, the night when you transform the night when you heal the night when you deliver the night when you turn my family around is someone praying this is the night of your power the night of your glory this beginning of miracles did jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory manifest your glory oh god father help my unbelief i reject unbelief they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way can god make a way you are in ministry pray tonight is a night when you expand when you receive you are in business pray career pray you are in ministry pray for your family pray release your faith Shila 
Paracato Salabradigesh, M. Praca Parodo Shoprata Labaruda Selecas, Rakata Parada Barado Celebradisha La Curianda Casalabas. Hallelujah. Listen, prayer point number two. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. You have not because you ask not. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete. Ask and you will receive. He didn't say give us any day. Give us this day our daily bread. Listen, when you come to God, it is not only important that you are aware of who he is, but you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for. Every time Jesus would meet with a blind man, a lame man, he would ask them, what do you want? That you are lame does not mean you want to stand. You must be able to verbalize your requests. You must be able to communicate. Listen, I know that many of you have written your prayer request, but I want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with God. Open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Someone is talking to the Lord. Communicate your expectation. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. It says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Palabaruta shala bragada balarabo. Granta lato shala gradida da balaraba. Someone is praying. Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will Please look up. It is not very difficult for a man's situation to change. 
God is not a magician. You will need to release your faith with understanding. You are before the God of all flesh, the doer, the worker of wonders. He's truly a miracle worker. Please believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. They are not a fabrication of human intelligence. No, no. God can work miracles. God does miracles. God delivers. God heals. God lifts. God transforms. God sets free. That's what his grace can do. Never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never stay the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never preach the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never see the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere of God's glory, Listen, don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. Deliverance, when kept within the boundaries of the word of God, is powerful. Listen, because for many of us, let me tell you this, I submit to you. Listen, please don't inconvenience the guests. The space is all right. Just, just let them be, please. Listen, it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept. That behind many tragedies are spirits. Please understand this behind many operations listen when jesus was going to calm the storm every storm is made of two things wind and water you can see the water but you cannot see the wind every storm is made of wind and water there is no storm that is made of water alone jesus rebuked the water he rebuked the wind and the water was still there is no problem that is as a physical problem. There are spirits back of it. Whether it is financial, marital, spiritual. One of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital. No, sir. No, sir. There are spirits, more spirits than men on the earth. In one man, there was a legion. In one man. That's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits. 6,000 spirits in one man. Please listen to what I tell you. Your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around and it, yes there are principles here and there but hear me you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with are we together there are you can only judge situations by what has affected you the one that has not affected you yet is there but just because it has not happened yet you may not know. So the secret is to address the spirits behind it. And not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there. Are we together? 
when we pray and minister to people, listen, we're, we're, a, very, we're a very balanced, Bible-based ministry. And let me tell you this by the Spirit of God. You do not help men when you leave the spirit that is back of their situations to go back with them. Now, I know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of Scripture. This is not what we are talking about. We are talking of liberty that is provable. That you can walk out before the service is done. You are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life must change. You can be a man of God here. Greatly ministry. You are anointed. But things may not be working. And you may just think the issue is just ministry, ethics, preaching well. That is wonderful. But let me tell you, he said, I desire once and again to come to you. But Satan hindered us. It is not only angels that are on assignment. There are spirits on assignment. There are demons on assignment. There are powers that are on assignment. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. What seest thou? Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, and against Israel. That these horns have made it that no man doth lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. It's a reality. Behind many families are spirits. Behind many medical reports are spirits. Behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits. Oh, my help has come. I shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago. He was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him. And while I was talking with him, as he entered my room, I saw a spirit just entering with him. And I looked at this dear gentleman, lovely, adorable, wonderful person. And I was politely going to hint him to say, sir, the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shut me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me. And said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices. They prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately, the chains fell. He said, all doors open. Not some. All doors. There was no use of key. The key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors open. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray.
Ela baruta shala karapa kato zebradiya. Prante la shubra haska barutiya. Egredu si ala haska baruta si ala bas. Shali barato sala barushi. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is not of the Christ. That is back of the situation around my life, my family, my business, my ministry. Pray. Hallelujah. You see, the power of God is already touching people. Listen, I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real. They are very, very real. Very real. Hallelujah. I have met so many spirits in my life. I've had so many encounters. That's not the basis of believing they are there. Scripture already tells us they are there. But let me tell you, they are there. And they are not there doing nothing. They are there causing pain. They are there manipulating families. They are there projecting things that are not of the Christ. But the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. I want to begin to pray now. Please listen. Whether or not you are an usher, I'd like you to help those under the anointing. We are going to do a lot of praying this night while I'm ministering. Um, please participate in the prayer. Prayer is very powerful when done with understanding. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people. Because there are real spirits behind people's situations. Hallelujah. First, I want you to bring out now. I'm not going to say anything. God is giving me an instruction. The power of God, I'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people. And these are spirits. And when that happens, the power of God will come upon them. I want you, whether outside or inside, just begin to bring them out here. We're going to pray and call on that name now. But the Lord is revealing to me. You will be very surprised. Some of you are standing for yourself, standing for your family. Please bring them out. This is the instruction God is giving. Except God is not God. There is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight. Please quickly just bring them out. I'm seeing the power of God. I don't know why God is giving me this instruction. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full. In full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. Christ 
Credo Selika Tuziadabash. We are ready to pray. Please lift your hands. Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As you shout that name, Jesus, I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives, over bodies, over finances, over destinies, I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant. It must go now at the count of three. Shout Jesus. One, two, three. by the power of the Holy Ghost bring them out in the name of Jesus I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men to realities in the spirit I come against it by the God of Jeshurun please bring them out we release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. We are still praying, my God. Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. Over families. Over businesses. I break those chains now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard. I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard. And the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave. The spirit of Hades. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare right now. Anyone covenanted to the power of the grave. The covenant with death. The covenant with the grave. By fire. May that fire fall on you now. The covenant with the grave. The covenant with death. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Be liberated now. Be free now. Haladuja li haska baruda shalabanda sibaha. Rekatiza neha shalakotia. Hallelujah. Now listen. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth, fibroids, malignant growth, cancerous tissues. By the spirit of the living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those crows to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady, please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Crows, 
I'm still seeing growths coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone, including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in. And we will never settle for less. We know there's Everyone here in front in this overflow and all the overflows i declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i command them to leave now pack your load and go at the count of three one two three go 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 out of their destinies now out of their lives forever out of their lives forever out of their homes forever forever hallelujah please pay attention we are still praying now the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock this is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move, you try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Now help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits, so that you cannot move. By this shout of the healer tonight, I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, side to you move forward go forward go forward go forward stagnation comes to an end retro apakoto shala rekete kete kete parus kaba embreketo sheleto sabaka stagnation comes to an end retrogression comes to an end Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry. Don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You are Bukola. Where are you coming from? Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. Listen, my dear. In the name of Jesus, this chain that I'm seeing be loose now. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. 
this, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I would just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of First Bank, you are on contract. Is that true? You are on contract. I will still pray. This person I am seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I am seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I am seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is it a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. I want to pray. You are five of you. All alive. Five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Contract staff with Sterling Bank. Wait. Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank. Yes. You will leave the bank soon. Amen. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now. But I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families. Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here. If it's not, I will pray for everybody. Five families. None. Not one person has settled down. Ladies now. Don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray for extended periods. Your whole body starts itching you in a funny way. You know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug? Chloroquine. That's what happens to you. Like physically you begin to scratch your body. I must pray for you. Why is she here? Please. You are the one? Come. Madam, you too. Where are you coming from, ma? You are coming from Abuja. Come. We we'll attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. 
You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue. I just saw fire, this row, right down, just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Our dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I curse the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Gombe State. You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I'd like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family now, God is breaking the plague of death. The power of God is coming. I don't know whether they are inside or outside. The plague of death is being broken right now. There is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death. Please come very quickly. I'll just touch you. I don't know why they are here, but we have to hurry up very quickly. Just a touch. Believe by faith. It is over. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sir, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Abuja. From Abuja? Yeah. What do you do, sir? I'm a minister. You are a minister of the gospel. I want to pray for you. Where, where, where are you coming from? Where do you come your state of origin? Five. Do you plan to go this Christmas? I'm not healthy. But I'm not healthy. Huh? I'm, I, I went for operation. It's not healthy. Listen, that's why I want to talk to you. I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing you were supposed to have died. It's because of the intercession of men that you are alive. But then, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. We, anything God shows, we cancel. You get the point now? I'm seeing this man going in a bus, and I'm seeing a truck. I will not mention, I'm not being antagonistic, but the truck did not just shift your car. It climbed it, and everybody gone like that. You see, when God shows a thing, it is because of the strength he has put in his church. The power to change it completely. Are we together? I want to pray for you. You are very sick. And even the surgery has not solved the problem. Because what I'm seeing is still there. Please hold my hand, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, let this man not be given to the sword. 
let him not be given to the grave in the name of Jesus I knock on the door of life and I speak to you sir by the power of the Holy Ghost be set free I fortify you by the power of God's word and I declare death will be far from your dwelling I speak that your going out is blessed and safe even your coming in is blessed and it is safe in the name of Jesus may the Lord show you mercy continually in Jesus name I pray family of five I need to pray hold my hands Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh yeah. Oh yeah yeah say In the name of Jesus I lose you and your siblings everything that is an orchestration of darkness I speak by the Spirit of the Living God you are loose now in the name of Jesus I declare liberty I restore dignity and honor what is happening to you I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going down here there's somebody the same thing is happening to someone there the same thing God is doing here, God is doing to a lady there. I declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus. Please come, sir. Let me just touch you by faith. In Jesus' name, be set free. Come. In Jesus' name, be set free. 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 There is someone, I think you are in ministry, you are in overflow one. The power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now. Please carry the person and bring the person here. We have to hurry up. I'm seeing the power of God touch the person. Hallelujah. I'm about to release that grace for speed again. Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala super I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners. Is, this, is a, this is a sign and a wonder. When God shows me a map, whenever I mention that location, anyone who is oppressed within that location, the power of God comes on them. Right now, I'm seeing the east. The east. I release that power now. The Lord is bringing liberation. Eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra the power of God is touching that woman right now who is the person mommy you're welcome one to pray ah. not everything that looks like sickness is sickness there are many things that are projections of darkness are we together mommy let me pray for you in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God help her please in the name of Jesus I command that spirit now by the power of the Holy Ghost release our mother in the name of Jesus mommy I command that infirmity that plague and that yoke of darkness be gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let me just pray for these two people now this lady where's she coming from okay there is 
it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you this lady this fair lady i'm talking to you in the name of jesus i speak by the power of the holy ghost may that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder the lord will show you things in your dreams he will show you things in visions please bring our mommy for me let me pray in the name of jesus christ um just touch her back for me in the name of jesus christ i declare right now this is not sickness this is the spirit of death i command the spirit of death hell and the grave to leave our mother right now by the power of the holy spirit complete emancipation complete emancipation in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here i don't know why but this is what he's saying just right here to the wall i'm seeing i'm seeing people's stomach the abdominal region i'm seeing things like chains just bring those under the anointing as i'm talking i'm seeing things like chains these are devils of infirmity the lord is asking me to just stretch my hand please just allow me do my madness with god here and let the lord set these people free please bring them out we're hurrying up now in the name of jesus karu salatu ziata kariza hashalam barita suba haseketa kradu saletu shala sabah hasharata tasiakata rakata barada balakata frata sadabakatu shala branda skabariata I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact. Every planting that is not of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free from it now. Yeah. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies. One of these ladies with the jerseys. I'm seeing an anointing. I know you are ministering, but this is a miracle God is bringing for you, for your family. One of the ushering ladies. I don't know whether they are inside, outside. I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies. This is, this is liberty that God is bringing right now. Shalus Karita Hasubadia. In the name of Jesus, my dear, look at me. Shame and reproach is living your life now. Shame and reproach is living your life now. The garment of shame and reproach is living your life now. Why is this gentleman here? You are not the anointing outside? Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come. You lifting your hands. Run. Come. Your time of change has come. Where are you coming from? Coming from Ondo State, Amikopa. It's, it's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. That's why you are here. Do you know me? I don't know you. That's why I'm saying you just relax. You were in the crowd and God brought you here. Do you know why God brought you here? Because things are not working at all in your family. God needs to turn things around. If I don't pray for you, what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family. But the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Let me pray for you. Hold my hands, my dear. What did you study? Medical laboratory science. Do you have a job? I'm, I'm a copper in Ondo State. I'm, work, I'm, I'm a copper. I'm serving an NGO. I want to pray for you. The favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I stay the power of evil over your family. And in the name of Jesus, I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but I want to release this grace for speed. Please, I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it, period. There is a grace. Gashina, Gamuna, 
searching how Sarakin Sarakuna Yana Na Sarakin Sarakuna Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please, I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year, five years, and put in one month. Is it not written in your Bible that I will restore the years? God does not only restore things, he restores time. Whoever can restore time must be God himself. Are we together? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice, inside, outside, parushalata. I declare at the count of three, Father, let this grace for speed, restoration, the mystery that gains time. May that grace fall upon people within this auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four online. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. One, two, three, take that grace now. Speed, restoration. I prophesy, pursue, overtake without fail, recover. Pursue, overtake without fail, recover. In career, pursue. In marriage, pursue. In ministry, pursue. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Pursue, overtake, recover. Pursue, help that woman, please. Overtake, recover. Financially, pursue, overtake, recover. In your influence, pursue, overtake, recover. In your academics, I pray for students. Pursue, overtake, recover. Pursue, overtake, recover. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person. By the person's self, mysteriously by the spirit, there is a prophetic word. And this is how God told me. It's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. It will happen by the spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know. Sarkin Sarakuna. Sarkin 
That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. Kai, the wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him. Limited him. Limited him. Please help them. Make sure they don't injure themselves. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Kashina, eh, eh, Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana. ones that have come out by the spirit I'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet I'm seeing their legs specifically their legs with chains I lose you now in the name of Jesus I release you to destiny I release you to destiny I release you to destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost no more delay no more retrogression by the spirit of the living God The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, my friend, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way. And I'm seeing a gate open before you, and night is at your back and day is in your front i prophesy to you what i'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy i take night behind you and i command your morning to stand before you i take night behind you and i command the sun to shine before you in the name of jesus christ Everyone lift your voice after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit. I am breaking limits. I am moving forward. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Breaking limits. In the name of Jesus, I make progress. Is someone praying? I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost. Breaking limits. Breaking limits. Hali shala hasaka tabra galoshia. Ekreto uskaba shala da baruti. Embreko to shole bra hasada da baladaba. Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke. I just saw fire, just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people, moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you. The HICC pastor, a strong anointing, shifting you by the spirit. Step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, na na na.
new dimensions. We want to pray for the sick now. Listen very carefully. I believe in miracles. There are people here who are standing, trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies. Kai, there is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarabuna Yana Na Yana Na Sarukin Sarabuna Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change, change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. But that every time, this is not a ritual, it's a revelation to come before the God who can answer. Listen, there are things here written that are death sentences. There are things written here that will take only God to provide a miracle for. There are things written here that are age-long captivities. Some of them even predate our coming to the earth. But there is a name that is above every other name. The Bible says, Wherefore God hath so highly exalted him and given him an office, a name, a title. The Bible says that at the mention of that name, everything in the earth in heaven under the earth will bow every knee and then every tongue will confess that jesus is lord even to the glory of the father i cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this this is not a ritual there is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here and one more time and the last time really for this year I want us to agree in the next two, three minutes. Wherever you are, just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the Egyptian that I see today, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I will see them no more forever. Is someone praying? Every evil report, orchestrations of darkness, if it had a beginning tonight is the end pray don't worry for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray
of Jesus, we decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Father, we bring before you every situation here. Marital situations, financial situations, spiritual situations, career situations. In the name of Jesus, we bring them under the covering of the blood. Every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain by the blood of the eternal covenant, we nullify that access now in Jesus' name. Father, by this prayer, we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against God's people. We declare them nullified forever. I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord, and I declare, receive strange testimonies. Before this year runs out, in the name of Jesus, let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies. <laughs> testimonies are largely answered through men. When it leaves heaven, most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form. There are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form. I'm praying every human agent that must partner with God, partner with the systems of God to see to it that this request is granted. We compel them by the spirit to do so now. In the name of Jesus. Every death sentence written here in the name of Jesus we cancel it now yes. hallelujah let it be done so shall it be we establish it in the name of Jesus now we want to round up by prophesying over our lives this for me you've heard me say this is the best part of the service because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life. Please, I want you to agree with me. Every proclamation that will come, receive it by faith. Believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. pray for your spiritual life the kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now strange encounters revelations of heaven receive that grace in the name of Jesus and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then And if our God is with us, every wall that stands before you and the next dimension, I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho, I command every wall, go down flat. Financial walls go down flat. Career walls go down flat. In the name of Jesus. A 
and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter I compel favor from them to you I compel favor from them to you in the name of Jesus There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable many people do not know what honor is the fortitude for preference there is an unction from god that fishes you out of the crowd places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you reward you recognize that which god has invested within you listen to me there are many gifted people the eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen is a waste to fight battles without reward David said what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward I pray for you may the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what he is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning, leave your mind and trust God. It is within his power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. Yeah. 
prepared blessings that take you to realms 10 years put in one month I release that grace upon you listen these graces are not some carnal show of wealth no they are time redemption systems understand what they are they seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom in the name of Jesus the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results receive that grace right now receive that grace in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here the sound of mourning the sound of pain and anguish by the spirit of the living God let it come to an end this night everything that has refused to walk in your life by the power of the highest I compel it to begin to walk now you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence In the name of Jesus, everyone here trusting God for a job, before this year runs out, may God give you a miracle job. Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough, we call upon the God of the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace. Hear me. Whoever ignores you will pay for it. Hear me. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. Let me say it again. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. I pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you I pray for every man and every woman of God here the errands and the horse that will hold your hands loyal men indeed may God give them to you here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod I declare by the spirit of God a restoration happens now <laughs> thou shall not be afraid of the snare of the fowler nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side it says none shall hurt you but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked I pray for you as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler may you escape from every evil may you escape from every trap in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life. Go from glory to glory. The remaining weeks of this year, I'm speaking to you. May they be weeks of strange wonders. And finally, let me speak over your prayer life over your word study life whatever has stolen your joy whatever has stolen your fire whatever has stolen your passion whatever has stolen your focus in the name of Jesus by fire let it be restored tonight may the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life may you be a wonder first to yourself and then may you be a wonder to everyone around you in the name of Jesus 
finally anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to see to it that you will not finish this year well to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family the hands he came and met the woman and said it's all well it's all well with your household i pray for you because the bible says to say to the righteous it shall be well therefore i speak over you it is well i declare over you all is well in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus for all of you who have traveled from far whether from another nation right down here from another city right down here you will go back with strange testimonies you will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here in the name of jesus very quickly you are here under the sound of my voice please let's minimize movement and you are saying apostle I want you to give me an opportunity to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me. The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, I want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here. Sustain the boldness to come. Don't be ashamed. Let's celebrate them as they come, Koinonia. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. The Bible says, for God so loved you and me, he proved his love by giving, not taking, giving his one an only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish is a law but have the way the life of god you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came i want you to know that there is a god who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say lord jesus please if you're joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God amen
keep your hands lifted while I pray for you. Father, thank you. You have brought these ones by your spirit. You are able to save to the uttermost, scripture says. Thank you for drawing these ones. I decree and declare by the spirit of God that every legal stand that the devil has against them is nullified tonight by the blood. I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly, there are a number of you. Um, there are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one, whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things with you and you'll be back. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.